Okay, so we have a child that is going to jump onto a moving uh, merry-go-round. And it's safe because the merry-go-round is only two meters. So it's going to be okay. It's going to come out all right. But let's, let's think about what this is saying then. This thing is rotating at some certain rate. And the child is going to hop straight on. Now, if I could draw, draw a picture, the child would be actually hitting straight towards the center. To ignore that little dot. Why is this important? What have we been doing with respect to torque? What would happen if the child was hitting this thing kind of tangentially? Does that kind of ring a bell? So if the child comes at this thing tangentially over this away, then the child would actually be applying a torque to the merry-go-round. So if I'm applying a torque, then I'm going to have a change in momentum for the system. And things are different. So I can't use conservation of momentum there. So one thing I want to point out, and it's a little beef that I have, and Mastering Physics does it. And so I just went ahead and left this as it is. So I was going to change it, but leave it as it is. Is that when you're asked for omega, this is in terms of revolutions per minute. If it asks for an answer in terms of revolutions per minute, it's okay to call that omega. But remember that omega is in terms of radians per second. So I would have to do some sort of conversion with my 2 pi r to get it in terms of radians, right? But it's okay. Sometimes we get lazy and refer to these as being kind of interchangeable. But one thing we do want to have this in terms of is seconds. And so when it's, I do that conversion, then I get that this is 1.05 revolutions per second. That's fast. Okay. So what do we have? We have an inelastic collision. That's what we have. So I have an I omega. Here you are given I, and you're given omega. So this radius just kind of didn't feel like very much. But generally what it says, yep, this child's going to sit on the outside edge. So this radius here is going to matter for where the child is. So let's think about that. Running at, let's write it out first of all. I have I1 omega 1 plus I2 omega 2 equals, they're sticking together, I1 plus I2 times omega final. So one of the biggest frustrations I see from students is what they worry about how to, how to treat the child in terms of inertia. And so what we're going to say is that we're, we're taking the mass of the child from the axis of rotation, remember that's what the R is, and the child is going to be the full two meters from the axis of rotation. So for the mass of the child, we're going to treat them as a point mass. So it's just like this glob that's going to be there, and then they'll rotate together. So the child's inertia then, I child, is going to be just their mass times R squared. Now, did they have any angular momentum before they hit? Hopefully you said no. They're heading straight on. They're not rotating. So the child, we'll call the child I2 and this I1. I2 is zero initially. As soon as they hit the stick, now they're going to have angular momentum. But they're zero initially. So then I can rewrite this in terms of I1 omega 1 divided by the sum of their inertias. I1 plus I2 gives me how fast it's spinning in the end. So let's see, I have I1 omega 1, so I've been given that value. I don't have to do any math to that. 250 times this 1.05 divided by 250 plus 25 times the radius, this two meters, squared. And I get that that equals 0.75. Cool. So that is 
the omega, omega final, of the merry-go-round child system. So what's fun is then we can kind of go like at an angle. So if I'm going at an angle, wouldn't the child indeed have some component of angular velocity? And if I'm going at an angle, I'm adding a torque. Hmm. So there's a lot of fun that we can have with these merry-go-rounds.